Okay, so in this lesson we're going to go through the Sculpt Geometry tool and how we can use it to improve our modelling. So, to start off with, on the polygon shelf, it's this little icon here. Or if you go to Mesh, Sculpt Geometry tool. And you can also go to the option box to bring up the tool settings. Now, in Maya 2011, this can come up as a floating window or you can snap it to the side. So if we get the select the tool, click the box, this top icon on the top right hand corner to get to the side and you if you want to drag it off you can click and drag this dotted line or we can move it back. Okay, so to start off with we're gonna be doing it on this robot arm, which is a project I'm working on at the moment, and there's gonna be a few blog po uh, podcasts about the creation of this, if you're interested. So to start off with we're going to concentrate on this arm here. So, to make sure that we're only editing this arm, what we're going to do is go to Show, Isolate Selected, View Selected. And that clears up the entire scene apart from the items you've got selected. Now, this is good if you want to, you know, edit a few items. Like, if we're looking from this camera angle, if we had the body there, it, you wouldn't be able to see it. So, it just cleans it up a bit. Okay, so, select the Sculpt Geometry tool. And, as you can see, going across the mesh, it's got this brush icon and a little circle icon. Now the first option is radius and we can also edit that by holding down the B key and clicking and dragging. So you'll see the little crosshairs in the middle will indicate and the circle how large it is. And these are the main options that are going to be changing. It's the radius and the opacity. The opacity is just the opacity, the effect that it has. So you can increase the opacity and that will affect, increase what the brush is actually doing. And the next one is the profile. And this is pretty much like, same as it's a brush, it's what type of fall off it will have. Like that will be a square, that will only affect some of the vertices in the middle of this circle. That will be a hardened circle so it will affect everything. So you can change them. And also you can import your own types of brushes if you've got some sort of a file. Okay, so the next one is the Sculpt Parameters. Now it's got a few icons here that you can see. So we can click on them and it changes the settings below and also the different commands. So the first one is Push. Now, as you can see, left click and holding and dragging about it's pushing the mesh in, pushing the vertices in. So that's what the push tool does. And again, you can have max displacement, so the maximum amount of displacement is allowed. Reference vectors, so you can go along normals, things like that, change settings like that. And also, on top of that, you've got the opacity, so if you bring this right down, as you can see, it's only pushing in slightly. If you bring that right up, getting a bigger effect. Okay, so the next one on is pull. Now this is just the same, obviously it's just going to pull the vertices out. So most of the options for this are the same as the push. And again, if you don't want so much of an effect, you can try a different profile. As you can see, this is affecting mainly the ones in the middle of the brush. So the ones out, out towards the edge get less of an effect. Okay, the next one is smooth. Now what smooth will do is obviously it'll smooth the vertices out and it'll take in effect this vertice and the surrounding vertices and try and smooth the result between them. Now this can be good and also if you've got something like the push tool or the pull, if you're pulling these vertices out, if you hold down the shift key, as you can see in the brush icon it's got a little PL if you hold down shift that goes to SM which is smooth. Also you can see that the FN is the first normals. So it shows what's happening in like normals. So you can see in the viewport what's happening as well. So holding down shift will also smooth. So this can be a good way if you're pushing them about or pulling them about and then holding shift smoothing them back going between there. That way you don't have to keep switching between the little t tools in the toolbox. The next one along is the relax tool. Now I find this one quite useful if you've got the mesh, we'll just undo a few steps, if 
you've got the mesh quite how you like it, but some of these vertices you want to move about or you know average them out. The relax tool is a good tool for this. It's kind of like smooth, but not as effect, not smoothing it out as moving them about. And one thing about the relax tool is it won't affect the end vertices as much. So vertices where the mesh ends, it won't edit them as much. And what this will do is it'll look at the vertices you've got selected and around them and try and even them out. So as you can see, it's trying to spread these vertices and make more even. This is good for if you're editing topology on the face. But another thing with this is relaxing the mesh too much might change the geometry too much that you don't want it. Especially if you're editing a face. If you relax somewhere around the eyelids, it'll make the eye really round and sort of cartoonish. But you might want that. You never know. So that's just a good way of sort of relaxing the mesh and editing it. Now, as you can see, this is editing quite a lot of vertices at once so this can save a lot of time having the instead of going to the move tool and moving these by hand each time so using the sculpt geometry tools it can be quite effective and another thing to note is if we got some vertices selected go into it that's only going to ed edit the selected vertices so if you want to edit the entire mesh go into object mode then select the tool again Okay. Also, another useful uh, attribute or tool is the reflection. So, the screen projection, we'll just go back to something like a pull. Now, reflection, what that'll do is obviously reflect along the object. So as we can see, it's set an X and it's reflecting across the X. Now for this particular object, it won't be that useful because it's like the left forearm. It's not going to be symmetrical. So this is more useful for symmetrical objects, obviously. So if you're doing some sort of a face or anything like that. But as you can see, it's doing the same across the X of this object. So it's mirroring it across. And then similarly, if you want to do it with the Y, the Z. Now screen projection. So at the moment we've got reflection which is reflecting across the object's bounding box or if you've got some sort of a face in the middle of the screen it'll be mirroring across that. Now if you put screen projection what this will do is look at the camera you're looking through and if you see the camera you can see it like this isolate perspective name that will be in the middle of the screen as you can see, the brush is mirroring across that midpoint of your screen or the camera you're looking through. So you can use this in quite a good way if you've got something that's you want that's mirrored not across the origin or not across the centre of a character's face. Okay, and okay, and also we've got reflect about origin. And what this will do is reflect across the origin of the screen. Now this will work with this object because with the X axis it will be looking the brush is over here, negative X will be over here but there's no mesh but if you've got some sort of an object like especially faces anything that's mirrored across the origin of your scene this will reflect across the origin so that can be quite useful for that. Now one thing I have noticed when I've been working sometimes is things like the smooth tool and relax when you're mirroring across like um, with this character which I was modeling his face and using the smooth tool and relax tool and what I found was mirroring across sometimes it didn't perfectly mirror it and there, there were a few vertices that were off on this side and it was a bit it a bit distorted on one side where it wasn't on the other so ideal thing to do is use a sculpt tool, sculpt away, and as, when you think you're at a point where you're finished, delete one side of the face. So if we sculpt this face, if you delete this side of the face, then we've only got one half. We can then re mirror this across using the mirror tool or duplicating it and moving it across. And that way you'll know 100%, no matter what's happened, 
you've remirrored it and it's perfectly symmetrical. And then again, you might not want it symmetrical, so it's whatever you want. So that's a look at the sculpt geometry tool, and it can be a very, very powerful tool to use. So I recommend try and mess about with this and see where you go.